Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply that all to plants. And in today's video, we're talking about wood ash. And this is different than charcoal. Charcoal we spoke about before, but this is very specifically the white dusty stuff that you get out of pellet furnaces, fireplaces, that sort of thing. Wood ash has a pretty wide range of both macro and micronutrients that is in the profile. The density in which those macro or micronutrients shows up is ultimately going to depend on the type of wood that you decide to use in your furnace. So if you're using hardwood, you're going to have a higher density of minerals and nutrients than if you were to use a softwood. Keep that in mind when we're discussing the whole video. So the three main components, it's calcium, magnesium, and potassium. And the specific nutrient profile, if we were to label this as a fertilizer that we would sell, would be 0-1-3. So pretty high in potassium. And potassium often is referred to as potash. That's weird for me because where I'm from in Saskatchewan, potash is a rock that's taken out of the ground, which is where the potassium is from. Anyways, I digress. So one thing that this powder does do is it does raise the pH, which may be a good thing depending on what kind of flowers you're growing or what types of fruit, vegetables, berry bushes, that sort of thing you're growing. This may be something that you want. This is going to take it from an acidic soil to something a little bit more alkaline. Now, it's not going to really up it a ton, but generally it's going to bring it up to that six or seven mark. This should be pretty obvious, but it should go without saying, do not use treated wood. So something that's been treated and you have the ash from, please do not utilize that in your garden. You don't want that uh, the, the chemicals that they use to treat it in your soil. If you choose to use this, you do have to use it with some caution, especially if you're directly applying it to the soil. There are two things that are in the mineral mixture into the ash that is less than ideal for plant growth, and that is lye and salt. And it's actually in a pretty high concentration. So if you choose to put straight wood ash onto your soil, you can put it on your lawn, your garden, wherever. It is around 20 pounds for per thousand square feet. And you're just gonna sprinkle it in place. You don't wanna drop any clumps anywhere because that will be an area of inhibition where you just simply won't grow anything. Now, what that equates to is around half of a five gallon pail. So to keep that in mind, if you were to sprinkle this onto your lawn, the better way to actually use wood ash in the garden is in your compost. And the reason for this is because wood ash, when applied to compost, not only helps keep weed seeds and things down or bad things from growing, the lye and the salt is slowly washed away as you water or rain hits that compost pile. It'll actually be alleviated from the system and when you go to apply the compost, you will have the calcium, the magnesium, and the potassium inside of the product into the compost, but you won't have the negative effects of lye and salt. Another really fun way to actually use wood ash in the garden is to use it for weed killer. So if you have an area such as brick or cement where you have weeds growing and you don't want them growing there, all you need to do is actually sprinkle a whole bunch a little clump of the wood ash and you will no longer have anything growing there for a little while. Another really fun way to use the wood ash product is actually to apply it to a surrounding garden bed to keep like just along the edges to keep slugs and snails out because they do not like this stuff whatsoever. The important thing to remember is if you're using this as a pest control, you are going to want to reapply after it rains because it will wash away eventually. The other thing that you don't want to do with wood ash is you don't want to apply it before seeding or after you've seeded. So you do want well-defined plants in the area before you apply it to the soil. And the reason for that, again, is because it's going to have a tendency to dampen the seed growth. It's going to give it some allopathic uh, properties to it that's going to suppress the germination of the seed. So keep that in mind. 
Now, wood ash is similar in the sense to charcoal or any of these burnt products where over application will have a negative effect in your yard. But if you use them with your in reason you will see huge benefits to your art such as the ph inc increase and then the actual addition of some macronutrients and some micronutrients so there's no reason why you shouldn't use it if you're ever in doubt when using wood ash and you don't want to over apply or you want to ensure that your nutrients is in balance a soil test is always a good idea especially if you're using this as an income um, or some sort of homesteading property, you're going to want to make sure that everything's in balance before you apply wood ash to the garden. If this is your first time using wood ash as a fertilizer, then you may simply just want to test one patch and just see how it goes. I think you're going to see some pretty miraculous results in this. This is probably a way better idea to use wood ash than it is to use things like eggs and stuff. So egg shells typically don't have a huge high concentration of calcium, oddly enough, but wood ash, it's pretty high in calcium. So you will see some very, very big benefits from it. But if you are shy, I would actually, I would do the compost method for sure, or you can mix it in with new potting soil earlier in the season and then as um, or late in the season apply it in fall and what will happen is it will wash away that lye and that salt and you won't have those issues so when in doubt always water it out and that goes for any sort of over fertilization because over fertilization is a sign of high salt content i want to thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and i will talk to you guys next time bye